Well, morning guys, so we've got a big morning ahead of us. We are let doing all the cows, but first I'm just feeding out a bale of hay for when they are done, they're gonna come on their new break. And in my last video, I said that I was having trouble feeding these bales out, because they weren't spinning, so what I've done is put the bale on the other way, and hopefully it'll work, but it doesn't look like it's going to. It's still grabbing that bottom corner. That's a pain, these bales are annoying to feed out. Damn. Well, it sort of made a difference. It's a little bit easier. There's just spreading a bit of cause mag. Oh, yeah, it is better probably this way, I reckon. Yep, that did work better, I reckon. So, must have had the bale around the wrong way. Ah, uh, little things, eh, make it so much easier. <laughs> it's pretty crazy, though, because this was one of the last paddocks of chicory that I drilled into an annual. And usually I would have got a grazing off through of this through the winter and look at it, it's still a wee way off grazing, so it's been a hard year. And that's the maize paddock that's gone into an annual and it's already regrowing quite well. You can see all the flooding just straight through there, but what's interesting is that there is a couple of puddles just at the bottom of these two paddocks, which means it's really waterlogged because they haven't been there in a while. So Dad was saying he doesn't think he's seen those puddles there for probably five or six years so it just goes to show how wet it's been at the moment I think it's just gone 8 30 so one of the girls from the vets is coming out she is leptoing them but we kept the cows on concrete again last night so this is the low uh, the late sorry the lates are on here the earlies are on the feed pad it was just a little bit unsettled weather sort of like this and there are a few showers coming through so we decided to take them off grass plus it makes it a little bit easier this morning too because we had to run everything through the cow shed they're here ready to go perfect timing almost gonna make a start but we just noted it's this girl here and she's springing up so she's obviously in the wrong herd it was been date scan wrong maybe that can happen hey 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 see Quite a big udder on her. Kylie's doing it today. Nice easy jab in the bum. Doesn't take too long. Pull both sides up. Easy as. Come on. Go on in. Push, 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 push. First herd's done now, I'm just going to go and get the second one, but what we're going to actually do is swap them over. So these cows are going to go down the bottom where the, where the earlies were, and the earlies are going to come up the top here on this country. I'll explain why in a bit. Second herd's almost done, and then it's just the heifers, so we were debating whether to do them or not, but they're nice and handy like right there, so might as well strike while the iron's hot. Heifers are on their way to the shed now, and I'll ask Kylie for eight shots. She'll just leave them in a bottle with a gun here for me, and I can use them on the milking cows because there's eight in there to do. I'm not going to bring them in now for her to do. These girls are getting pretty good at going through the yard now. Look at that, more rain. Lovely. We'll just do seven at a time again. Well that's all the big mobs done, now it's just the milking herd, so it's just the eight and I've been left a gun and there's about 10 shots in here so because it's at the end of the bottle it's a little bit hard to get out so I've got a little bit extra but I'll go give these milking cows and then job done. They only get two mils of this and it is a lepto, so leptospirosis that comes through the cows in the urine and can be passed on to humans. And I don't think you die from it, but you get real crook if you get it. So this is just for protection for us, really.
Well, it's the next day now, and I'm just moving these lows. So they are going on a break over there. Fed out to them. I'll put the cause mag out. I'm actually going to give them two breaks today because there is another little weather bomb rolling in tonight. It's not quite as bad as the last one, as you can see. It's sort of yeah, nowhere near as big, but hopefully we might miss a lot of it, and it's going to go down the sort of east coast and onwards. So we are just located in here somewhere. And we might just get the edge of it, which would be nice. We don't really need any more rain at the moment. But I should say too that Dad likes to lepto the cows right before they're going to calve. He has this theory that when you jab them, some are bought. So if they are bought closer to the time when they're going to calve, the calves are going to live. And also we can milk them. So a lot of people do lepto when they dry off, whereas we do it just before we calve. And there's a few other people that do it like that as well. But it's a perfect opportunity where I can swap the herds over. So the earlies go up onto the higher country up there, which is a little bit closer to the milking shed, and then the lates are down here on sort of the flat country. And the reason I bring them down here is because of these things right here, these drains. So I know that all these girls in here aren't really gonna calve until about the 3rd of August, and I've got these paddocks that need grazing which are right beside the drain. So I can graze these cows here because I know that most of them aren't gonna calve. Well, they're not supposed to anyway. So you might get the odd one that comes early, but it won't be till sort of late July. So it's only about the 13th or 14th of July at the moment. So I'm pretty safe for the next couple of weeks. And I don't wanna use the other mob because they are calving at the moment and I don't want calves going into the drain because then they could potentially drown or just get wet and cold and uh, it's no good for them. So that's what I'm sort of doing or why we swap them over like this. Just been in for lunch and it's about three o'clock and it's finally cleared up, but now it's starting to spit again. But I did have a question the other day about that contouring that I did for the shed pad here and where we pulled the clay out of. What does it look like now? Or what's the grass situation like on it? So this was all roller drilled and you can see it is pretty scarce because a lot of it has washed out with all these rain. So it's probably the bad or not the greatest time of the year to sort of plant in when do we do it may late may it might have been but there is a cover there so this is going to take probably i don't know it'll take months to sort of come back once it's established i'll be able to put the cows in but that'll be sometime in the sort of late spring maybe but i think it's looking not too bad you can definitely see areas though there where the water's run and the seed sort of piled up down the bottom here like in that but there's a lot of clover coming back through and a lot of it's probably, that's well not clover, those are all weeds, but there is a bit of clover. Some of it will probably be from what was there before, but it is green. It's gonna be quite weedy. I'll try and keep on top of them, and then it'll probably need regrassing come the autumn again, I'd say. I just think it's gonna to be too scarce and just too many weeds. So I don't know, we don't know what it's gonna look like if it is. And too bad, I'll probably just leave it. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. It'll take months till we see what it actually looks like, I guess. This is the old effluent pond. And it is getting pretty high. The first year when we took over this block, it actually overflowed out the top there. But this way it has been really empty, so there's a lot of water going in. And all that goes in there is clean water, so no effluent goes in there whatsoever. But it is starting to spit, like I said, so I might try and get the drone up and show you some shots of all the flooding. It'll be quite interesting because there might be some carp swimming around out there because like I said once the drains get high enough they do come up and sort of eat all the plants and stuff and I reckon there's enough water out on the paddocks that they can get out there and there'll be a heap of feed out there, all the grass and, and, and whatever else they can get but we'll have a look, see what we can see. Too many days in the darkness Without a glimpse of the light Running tired and broken and scared But I swear I'll never give up the fight I see you broken and beat Head pulled down over your eyes Every part of you wants to surrender Darling, you were meant to survive With every star
Far out, did you see all those fish? There were heaps of them. I don't know if it, you can tell on the video, but they actually look pretty big too. So, I don't know. It'd be quite fun to go out there with a bow and try and spear a few of them. Or even maybe just the hand spear, I reckon you could probably get a couple. But if they're out there and that water drops low enough, they'll get stranded in the paddocks and they'll just, I guess once the water goes down, they'll just die. But far out, that is amazing. You can see them from like, I don't know, 30, 40 metres up in the air. They stick out, those orange ones. There's a few black ones, but... Those are just the big ones and there's probably little ones swimming around too, so there's probably hundreds of them, but... You can see from the other day though that it has dried up through here, so that was pretty wet the other day, but then up, well this sort of water edge here has pushed up this way because it's got quite a big catchment, so it goes all this way, probably to what you can see up there, those trees, and that's the major sort of catchment for here. So whatever we get, it sort of comes down over, I don't know, half a day I guess, and sort of fills up. And then, I guess, all you can see along there too, that's also the catchment and I think it even goes over the other side of that hill there and it comes down and this is one of the drains that we boundary cut goes into the lake but there's another one just about a hard two, three hundred metres that way where it's real wet in there and that's the actual main drain for the lake. It's a bit of a pain though because there is a pretty easy solution to get rid of this flooding a little bit faster than what happens now. So. Down there there's a the big lake and it's only got one outflow or one outlet and that is at the other end of the lake and the council changed it, I think it might have been 10 years ago maybe, I have no idea when it was actually so I can't say but there used to be an old weir on it that you could move so they would sort of drop the lake or they'd drop the weir and let more water out in the winter when we get a lot more rain and then they'd raise it in the summer. Um, so the water would sort of stay in the lake and it wouldn't drop as fast which makes sense to probably a lot of people, myself included, and they've gone and changed it and put a permanent weir on there. So what happens now is that it floods big time in the winter and then it drops a heap in the summer. So I think they should go back to the old system of having the, the mover one, which would benefit us because that means we could sort of get rid of this, this water through here a little bit quicker. But then I think it would also sort of flush the lake out a little bit too, get more water moving through there. But I guess they don't really care because they're not dairy farmers, so, so it is what it is. But... I hope you enjoyed the video guys, that'll pretty much wrap it up and apart from that I'll see you next time. And remember, give it a like if you haven't already. 